Okay, so let's continue on here um, with the uh, next hey, examples. All right, dividing polynomials now. When you're dividing polynomials, it's kind of like grouping things together. So when we're grouping, I want to start with just the numbers here first. And the numbers that I have are a 6 and a 2. So just picture this um, as if we are trying to simply divide uh, everything together. So here's finally the whole problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to simplify each of these as much as we can and obviously as it looks here I'm going to expand everything and the reason why I'm expanding it is just to show you the very first time how you can kind of cross stuff out and make this simpler it's a lot more work doing it this way but you can kind of see how things cross out so in this very first one I have a 6 x squared means x and x y cubed means y times y times y and I just have an x and a 1 at the bottom so all I did was expand this to recreate this. Do the same here. I have a 4, 3 x's, 1, 2, 3, 2 y's there, y squared, 1, 2, and a 2 x, y in the bottom. And the last one, I have an x and a y, an x and a y. Now once again, you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you how you can get items to cross out if you wanted to do them this way. It'll take a very long time, but you know, just want to give you a different type of explanation here and why things work. So now I'm going to try to group things together. 6 and a 2, right? What is 6 divided by 2? Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay. Now I'm going to get stuff to cross out. Whatever's in the top and the bottom, I can cross out. Well, there is 1x in the bottom, and there's 1x in the top, so I get them to cross out. There is 1y on the bottom, and there's a y on the top. So notice all that's left. I have a 3, I still have this x on top, which is why I wrote this x down here, and I still have two y's left on top, which we can write as y squared. Moving on to the next one, 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, I have one x on both the top and the bottom, so they can cross right out. I have one y on both the top and the bottom, so they can cross out. And once again, I put that x squared there, because how many x's do I have left on top? 1, 2 x squared. How many y's do I have left on top? Just a y. And there's that. Over here I have a negative, two, a negative 10 and a 2. Well, negative 10 divided by 2 is a negative 5. So there's that. The x's, there's one on both the top and the bottom. And there's a y on both the top and the bottom. Are there any x's or y's left on the top? Nope. That's why there is no other x's or y's left over in this problem. And there is that polynomial divided. Now you could have just looked at this and said, well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Um, if you remember with division of exponents, you subtract them. So 2 minus 1 is 1x. 3 minus 1 is 2. That's how I got that one. 3 minus 1 is 2. That's how I got that one. 2 minus 1 is 1, that's how I got that one. And what is 1 minus 1? 0. That's why there's no x's. What's 1 minus 1? 0. That's why there's no y there. So you could have just done it quicker that way, but this is just to show you that you can get items to cross out as well. So the product formulas I want to uh, review with you here as well. Um, with these product formulas, if you don't remember them, it is not the end of the world. So if your teacher sits there and says, how are these memorized? Well, guess what? do it. Your teacher told you to do it. You memorize them. However, if you don't, you can always foil the things out and multiply everything and get the answers. It'll just take longer. So if you're in my class, by all means, memorize them if you want. If you don't, it's not the end of the world. So just to show you here, so you can see how this uh, all works out for you. Um, x times x is x squared. x times negative y is negative xy. x times y is positive xy, so they cross out and y times a negative y is negative y squared, and that's how you end up getting that. All that I just did there was try to explain to you the math, which is what I'm going to show you right here. x times x is x squared. This is just the foiling. x times a negative y is negative xy. Down here, x times y is a positive xy. y times negative y is negative y squared. And notice these two items are exactly the same, except one is positive and one is negative. So they cross right out, leaving you with just x squared, y squared. So the point by this formula is if you see two things that are exactly 
they look almost identical except one's addition and one subtraction. What they're saying is you take the first term and you square it. You take the second term and you square it. And that'll be your answer. So just something else there to uh, keep in mind. So taking a look at this as an example, you can FOIL this. Or like I said, don't they look exactly the same? Yeah. They do, except this one's addition and this one's subtraction. So you take the first term and you square it. So the first term and square it happens to be um, 3a squared. Then you take the second term, which is a 4. You square that, but you put a minus sign in between them. So remember, with exponents rules, you take that 2 through, so it's actually 3 squared, which is 9, and a squared and 4 squared is 16 and just remember that minus sign in between there and you are done with the minus sign in between there but just keep in mind the trick is if you remember the formula if you don't you could still FOIL and get your answer so if you don't remember you can still FOIL and get your answer is the point that I'm trying to get at here I will smash your into a car windshield okay. and then take your mother Dorothy Mantooth out for a nice seat. All right, this one is just with uh, addition. So it's x plus y squared. So what we're saying is if you have two items um, and it's exactly the same twice or squared, um, this is the formula that you end up getting. x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So what we're saying is you take the first term and you square it, boom. Then you take these two items and you multiply them together and you multiply it by 2. And then you take the last item and square it. And once again, if you did not remember that, you could simply just FOIL it. And remember, this is like saying having it written out twice. So what is x times x? That's x squared. What is x times y? That's a positive xy. x times y there, that's a positive xy. y times y is y squared. So you combine your two like terms. If you have one xy and another xy, that means you have two xy's. And there is what we have up top. So once again, if you do not remember this, you can simply just FOIL it. But let's use our rule. So what we do here is you take the first item and you square it. So there it is. It's 2x squared. Then you take these two items, you multiply them together, and you multiply them by 2. So there's the 2 out in front, there's the first term, and then the second term. And then you take the last term and you square that. So I have to take that squared through. So 2 squared is 4 and x squared is x squared. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. So that is a 20 and there's 1x there. And 5 squared is 25. And there's your answer. So once again, if you remember the formula great. If you don't, you could have just foiled it to get that answer. That's really all you'd have to do there. So just something to keep in mind there. So um, when we come back here, we'll try to finish up, but no promises. There could be a lesson four on this. I'm not sure. But when we come back, we will try to finish up some more things on algebraic expressions in our prerequisite five section for algebra three trig.